Ranieri International, a company with 50 years of experience in the nautical world, is one of the main European builders for pleasure crafts up to 10 meters long. They build boats of any kind, even inflatable ones, and they haven't been affected by the past few years' sector crisis. All is well then. Well, it would be so if it wasn't for the fact that they are incapable of being satisfied. Those who build boats, as well as their owners, want them always nicer, more comfortable, bigger, and that's why they created the new flagship, the next 370SH. It passes the 10 meters target by 1.150 centimeters and has a beam of 3 meters. It passes the 10 meters target by 1,150 centimeters and has a beam of 3 meters. Moving out of one's comfort zone is always a risk, and they must have used all their energy to create their biggest boat. The shape is sporty, the finishing classy, the deck luxurious. It's comfortable, moves freely, accessing every space with very handy passages, made in such a way that your guests feel at ease everywhere. It's not a coincidence if this kind of boat is called walk-around. The deck is flat, the walkways are wide, the steps are low and the bulwarks high. It's been built in compliance with the CE A-Class regulations and it would deserve a sea trial in extreme conditions. But the still waters of this lake can, however, give us important indications. The glossy and iridescent sides are delicate and they have to be taken care of. But to help us maintain them properly, Ranieri treats them with several layers of transparent coat until they become almost anti-scratch. The furnishing and accessories have been neatly placed to achieve a perfect balancing. The plane here, you don't need to trim adjustments, it's just enough to open up the gas and bring the propulsion engines to 3,400 revolutions per minute. The minimum speed is 13 knots. The hull finds itself the right equilibrium thanks to its two redans that create a more stable waterline. Furthermore, around the two steps, the water pressure increases with the effect of sustaining the hull more. In this way, the boat is more dry and offers a lower hydrodynamic resistance. The design is obviously Ranieri International, and each detail has been taken care of, from the moulds to the last finishing, all inside their production site at Sovereto. We're about to test the performances, but to evaluate them properly, take into account the fact that underneath the deck there's a rather peculiar cabin, I believe unique for this size. Three doors face the landing. One is the master bedroom with a king-size bed. The other two lead to the spaces in which the bathroom has been split in. And that's not all. In fact, on the aft, under the cockpit, there's another double room, convertible with two twins. Then there are lockers, closets and scuttles, of course. The finishing for the inside areas is the light oak. When trying a boat, it's always necessary to pay attention to the loads on board. For instance, this next 370SH has a 1,000 litres fuel tank, while the water reservoir is 200 litres. Amongst the auxiliary services, there is a generator and the air conditioning unit, and all these loads obviously have an effect on performances. Although right now the fuel tank is almost empty and will be able to go faster. Even if we have low fuel, the boat is not light because this wants to be an open yacht, not simply a common motorboat. In the cockpit, as an example, there's a fully furnished kitchen cabinet where it's possible to fit a fridge and ice maker. And under the deck, there's another fridge. The weather deck has been paved with teak and aft there's a solid wood table. 
For all these reasons, I find appropriate the choice of the two Mercury Verano 400R as propulsion engines for a total output power of 800 horsepower. Fino a 20 nodi ci si può stendere anche sul materassino di prua. Up to a speed of 20 knots, it's possible to sunbathe or listen to some music on the four cushions. The speakers are in the backrest. But if you ever decide to give some gas, the passengers will have to move to the aft couch or the seat next to you. Don't worry about the cushions, they are all well rigged to the deck. The helm is very convenient. There's a huge windshield that protects effectively, and it's framed by a handrail that can be used as well. Il sedile di pilotaggio mi permette di stare appoggiato oppure di sedermi in maniera... The skipper seat allows me to either lean on it or to comfortably sit down. There's also an armrest that makes me enjoy a car-like position. Eco-friendly leather has been used for the upholsteries and I like that. It has even been used to line some handrails to make them both classy and anti-slip. And then this fabric has been used, very cool and ideal for hot weather. And even if it doesn't look like it, it's totally water repellent. The main deck has been paved with teak planks, oriented by the beam. The aesthetic effect is fantastic, the boat looks even wider. But with this kind of finishing, it has not been possible to install drains. I believe Ranieri International is looking at the North European markets. Well, look at this control panel, for instance. I believe that it's necessary to be about two meters tall to be able to properly read the instruments. It would be best to direct them towards the skipper instead of showing them to the passing seagulls. However, I can give you the data. 4,000 revolutions per minute. Fuel consumption, 70 litres per hour. Speed, 18 knots. Now, let's get real. There's a joystick right here, but it's not for manoeuvring, even though it's optional with these Mercury engines. This is to control the flaps, very user-friendly. This craft is very pleasant to sail, very quick and it turns very smooth too. Today the water is very calm. I'm going to look for some waves. Wakes from ferry boats, or my very own maybe. The hull is a deep V, and this helps to push the water away in order to avoid to be covered by the spray in the event of strong winds. I'm currently at a speed of 5,000 RPM and at a speed of 30 knots, and it looks like I'm not even moving. It's actually the right moment to act on the trim control, to have the hull raise some more, and to have the steps installed at midship right under my feet work at their best. It's marvellous to change the trim so quickly. It's possible to feel how the fluidity changes completely. The engines are less loaded, the water resistance is lower and it's more pleasant to control the yacht this way. The list is perfectly proportional to the rudder angle. I mean to say that the banking increases when increasing the rudder angle, but always in a smooth way, without sudden movements that could frighten us or, anyway, require a more challenging control.
These engines can run up to 7,000 revolutions per minute, so at 5,800 we can consider them still at cruising regime, and at this speed, with an aggregate fuel consumption of 150 litres per hour, we're sailing at 35 knots. If we want to reach the maximum speed, we have to push them up to 7,000 RPM. And there they go, 45 knots. It's the moment to give full rudder. Even this big lake becomes small with such a fast... Before, I told you that this is a great yacht. I believe that it's also a great motorboat, exactly for its performances. This configuration of the next 370SH, including the engines, is worth 190,000 euros before tax. Before trying it out, I would have said that it would have been interesting to see it with two 300 or 350 horsepower overboard engines. But now that I sail with it, I wouldn't pass the 400 Verano. Before closing this review, let's give you some more details. The handrails are everywhere even in the beach area or the swimming platforms to hold yourself while floating. Along the walkways there are some LED lights installed also underneath the kitchen cover. The lockers are built in to be used also as tanks for fish. Another detail, the windlass is placed underneath the hatch and the fore platform is very wide to comfortably walk out from the bow. This is the first Next 370SH, but I believe that we'll soon see many more of them 